running a little late, but there's a free Buster Keaton film with live pipe organ at a Presbyterian church, and obviously I am decked out to go see it, and I will give you a rundown of my outfit when I get back.
so this here is the pipe organ at the uh, First Presbyterian Church in Ypsilanti. Can we focus? There we go. Uh, contrary to common belief, pagan ex-Catholics do not burst into flames at Protestant churches. Oh, this organ is so beautiful, I want to play it, but... Uh, I, I, there's people in the back in the reception area, so I'd really rather ask permission, but I, I don't know, this is probably not the time to ask. Did you leave? All right, so this is what I wore out to go see uh, Buster Keaton in Our Hospitality, and I'll do a quick review of the film with, uh, with uh, Stephen Warner's um, organ playing on the pipe organ at the uh, f uh, First Presbyterian Church of <laughs> um, Ypsilanti. So uh, we've got felt beret that I got from Target ages and ages ago. And we've got a whole lot of antique brooches. Uh, this one is Bakelite, uh, approximately late 20s through 30s. This one, this is a French, it's jet and some kind of white stone. And uh, we're guessing as early as mid 20s to as late as mid 40s was the guess from Linda. And then we've got a little shamrock brooch with little plastic imitation pearls, but this is vintage 20s. And we've got a little, probably just glass, green stone here. And we've got a little uh, crescent moon with um, more glass stone. It's also vintage 20s. And we've got this big um, arrow brooch with marcasite. And this is 1910s through mid 20s approximately and of course my glasses uh, i've got a a green um lip color from covergirl i believe uh my nyx brow gel um uh this eyeshadow the julep um orbital in borealis and uh, uh i think this uh nyx jumbo eye pencil in green and I'm doing the uh, the front camera because I've got this uh, this is a beautiful vintage 1920s um, kimono style robe penwa I believe is the uh, the correct term for this style but it's got a uh, it's got Chinese characters on the back and I'll uh, flip around and go to the full length mirror one of them uh, apologize for the uh, for the um, uh, low lighting here, so uh, here we can see. So yeah, the phone is not playing well with the uh, with the light on right now. So this, this beautiful Chinese inspired embroidery and a lot of fringe that hangs down a lot. And then I've got uh, bathroom. And then I've got these lace um, overlay jeans. It's just like a beige stretch denim underneath these. Uh, there's not a whole lot of stretch to the lace, but I love these jeans and they fit again. And I forget which um, which shop I got them in. And we see a wad of cat hair and some litter that got flung out of the box on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna sweep it up today, but I've still got time today, so. And my uh, canvas sneakers, of course, because I was just walking there. And my big O-ring belt. And then I've got this uh, body chain necklace. Ah, and it's getting caught on my dermal. My last surviving dermal. And this, this feels like it's just plastic. Maybe glass. Maybe an acrylic glass. And of course my magnifying glass. So, yeah, I, I don't want to sit down with the, uh, with the penwa on, so I, uh, I disrobed. Literally. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who have not seen um, Buster Keaton's um, Our Hospitality, was the name of the film, 1920, actually, I've got a poster. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Hello, Manau. 
he can tell we're talking about silent movies and that he's named after a silent director. So, this is what I just went to go see. Um, now playing at uh, the Ypsilanti Pipe Organ Festival, which is apparently an event uh, run by the, uh, the Presbyterian Church with, uh, with their pipe organ. And this does not say the year. But we do have uh, some quotes from, uh, from the reviews when it came out 1920, I don't know, let's just say 1924 uh, until um, IMDB tells me otherwise. Uh, absolutely different. A big box office winner from Moving Picture World. Uh, will attract them anywhere. Motion Picture News. Uh, and from the Exhibitor's Herald, uh, nothing so novel or funny has ever been pictured. Success is assured. And so, uh, this was starring Buster Keaton, Old Stone Face, and in the description box below, I'm going to uh, link to a video from Biographics because I really love educational. Uh, I really love educational series, uh, don't I? Uh, he uh, um, he did a um, an episode about Buster Keaton recently enough, and. Um, <laughs> And there were some people at the... Actually, like, I was one of the youngest people there. I think one of the uh, ushers at the church who was there, I think he's close to my age, and gives me hella gay vibe, and that would be nice if he was not a Presbyterian. But aside from him and myself, I don't know, I want to say there was at least a ten-year gap from the next... from us to the next youngest people, and then, like, no teenagers to speak of, and then we had some, uh... Uh, this uh, family with uh, three little girls. Um, I think the oldest was about ten. Yeah, I was I was one of the younger people by a wide enough margin, which happens a lot at silent films. You usually see a lot of older people. Um, you don't see any more people who remember when it first came out, or at least not very clearly. Uh, you don't see too many of them anymore. So yeah, it's loosely based on the Hatfield and McCoy family feud, and um, like to the point where the family names are um, Canfield and McKay. <laughs> so so they were not they were not being shy <laughs> with uh, with with this. And so it's it's a very slapstick comedy, but if your only real familiarity with slapstick is like Three Stooges or Jim Carrey, um, I want to say it's got a lot to do with, you know, like his, you know, he, he had this very, you know, he, he well earned the nickname of, you know, Old Stone Face with that, with that expression of his. So it almost makes a lot of the, um, a lot of the physical comedy, it, it has this weird kind of sophisticated air to it because of Buster Keaton's just, you know, stone expression that he just like, like chaos going on all around him. Unfortunately, I like either I I missed uh, filming or I um, or for some reason my phone's camera would not save some of the better uh, physical gags and other. Um, so it didn't save a lot of the good physical um, comedy gags, and it also didn't save a lot of Buster's best stunts. I would say um, Buster Keaton was sort of infamous for being his own stuntman. Like, he, he outright refused to let anyone else do the stunts for him, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he kind of grew up doing this. Simon Whistler on, um, on the Biographics video goes a lot more in-depth about this, but yeah, Keaton, Keaton kind of grew up doing this. It was like he and his father, I believe, had a vaudeville act, and he just sort of, he grew up learning how to do this, so he learned how to, like, and I'm not saying he never damaged him, himself physically, because he did a few times, um, but he knew how to, you know, fall to, um, to experience minimal damage, so, um, and basically it came down to the fact that, you know, he was a bit of a perfectionist, so he didn't trust other stuntmen to be able to do it right, and have it look both as, as physically painful while being as funny as he could do it. 
So he he was he was notorious for doing his own stunts to the point where uh, this, along with a lot of his other films, this one was directed by Buster Keaton himself and Jack Blystone. And Keaton, if memory serves me right, Keaton took over a lot of the, the of the directing from Blystone. Uh, uh, like many of his co-directed films, he kind of took over at some point because they were so fearful that this could be the stunt that would kill him. So they were just like, nope, nope, I want no part of this. And so he would he would direct all of his own stunts. And at some point he was at some point he was the only director willing to work with himself. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, Keaton Keaton was and. Uh, I'd have to agree with Louise Brooks. He just has this beautiful face. Um, one of the most beautiful in any man who ever lived, especially when he was, you know, very young to about my age. He's just, he just had this gorgeous, gorgeous face. But then again, I have a weakness for large eyes with a prominent nose, and a lot of people have noticed this. Um, Long before I did, in fact, like I would, I would like many people who have a certain type. Uh, <laughs> I was kind of in denial about it for a while. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a plus to me with Keaton's films. But more than that, more than that is just the way that he just. I love, I love his very stone expression in a lot of things, which just adds this other level to a lot of the physical comedy and. You know, that he was known for. He was one of the one of the earliest and definitely one of the greatest of all time with slapstick uh, comedy actors. I would say a lot of that has to do with you know, just just his stone faced expression that he would that he would do to an extent. I I almost want to um, attribute that to possibility that he was on the autism spectrum just because um, a lot of the autistic folks I know um, they have, they have like maybe two or three facial expressions and it's not you know but otherwise you know like they could be very excited about something but you wouldn't know to look at their face uh, but then again um, there is there is enough range in his abilities as an actor when he's not doing slapstick parts that he's it's also possible that he just got very good at making that face because he knew it added this other level to to this where he just comes off like in so many of his roles he just comes off as this like I said like all of this chaos can be going on around and he's doing all of these um, elaborate stunts and uh, and slapstick bits and he's just got this this stone this stone faced uh, deadpan expression, which I think a lot of people can kind of relate to. In fact, when I was uh, when I was at the um, little uh, reception in back for um, for the organ player, who would be uh, uh, Stephen Warner, he's he he grew up in the area, and uh, one of a uh, one of a long line of Stevens who play the organ at the Michigan Theater in downtown Ann Arbor. So I was at the reception and they had you know, berries and um, lemonade and sparkling water and iced tea and saltwater taffy and cupcakes. And I knew I could have the berries definitely and the saltwater taffy because I know where it came from. And so I'm, um, well, I had them at first on a plate. And why is there cat hair in my berries already? So I had them at first on a plate, and then the plate fell, and, you know, first thing out of my mouth is, oh, this is my life today. <laughs> it's one of the things that I find quite relatable about, uh, about Keaton's comedy is, you know, all of this chaos can go around, can be going on around, and he's just got that same deadpan expression of, well, this is my life today. <laughs> And that's one thing that I love about Buster Keaton films. You'd probably think that I own more Keaton films on DVD than I do, and I really need to remedy this. Uh, that's about all I've got to say. I, am, I know uh, Stephen Warner is going to be um, doing the live organ accompaniment for Wings 
at the Senate Theater, I believe, in Detroit this coming September. Uh, there's not a there's not a hard date set for it just yet, but he knows it's going to be September, probably later in the month, around the 20th or so. I hope I might be able to go see that. I would have to take Amtrak, of course, but um, unless I can find a ride, but. I cannot count on that from my friends, can I? No, I can't. That about wraps it up, I would say, and if you enjoyed uh, my little vlog plus review kind of thing, uh, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. It, any kind of interaction is good for my um, appearances in the algorithms and all of that. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, I do silent film reviews, I do book reviews, I'm working on uh, Storm Constantine's uh, Raythu series, rather as created by, because uh, there's a lot more writers brought into the fold on that now. And I have also do a lot of videos about goth and local history, and a lot of vloggy, ranty kind of nonsense. Uh, so yeah, if that sounds like your cup of tea, hit the little subscribe button, which is probably in this general direction. I don't know. Um, hit the hit the little dingy bell, and you might actually get notified once in a while by YouTube. And I think I'm gonna finish this morning's cup. This coffee is so old. But I think I'm going to finish it because I don't waste money because I had a couple of aunts who were alive during the Depression and my father was just, it wasn't that much younger than them and so... <laughs> Ah, uh, and yeah, he was about 40 when I was born, but at the same time, I'm a little older than I look, so... Um, so yeah, like, do the maths in that. <laughs> y you can probably figure out how old I am watching enough videos, but... That's... that about wraps it up, so... Bats and kisses, dear hearts, and... Oh, yeah, that's another thing, is like, uh... Speaking of bats, cats rhymes with bats, and you saw... Murnau walking across here. Uh, he is speaking of silent films. He is named after the director. Yes, that is correct. Uh, but yeah, um, cats walk into frame with alarming regularity on my videos. So, and I'm convinced that's about half the reason people subscribe is because you're just waiting for a cat to come into frame. And so, like I said, that about wraps it up. So. Bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and uh, slun, motherfuckers! Uh, I got there a little bit late, but that's because my the, uh, the, the transit app on my phone, which also gives walking directions, but the transit app on my phone, I swear it's on drugs, and it, it was telling me to go in the wrong direction for a good block and a half. And I was like, okay, I'm nowhere near the church. I'm nowhere near this church. Where the hell? And then I realized, oh, crap, I literally passed that church. Like, but the phone was still telling me, no, no, go this way. I'm like, what the... But the numbers are going down. Down, I say.